This is Doug DeMuro, and today I'm going to talk about cars that I would buy for $50,000. Fun cars that I would get with a $50,000 budget. People are always asking me, hey, you know, my budget is X dollars, what fun car would you get? Well, today I'm going to answer that question for 50 grand. Let's get started. Before I get started, be sure to check out Cars and Bids, which is my enthusiast car auction website for cool cars from the modern era with free listings. You can list your cool car for free and auction it on Cars and Bids. And we've had some fantastic sales recently, including this Audi RS7 sold for just under $58,000. This wonderful Toyota Land Cruiser pickup, old school, sold for around $43,000. And this wonderful Lotus Esprit V8 sold for just over $60,000. If you're looking to buy or sell a cool, interesting car from the modern era, that 80s and up, Cars and Bids is the place to do it with daily auctions, great selection, and free listings. Check it out at carsandbids.com. Okay, so fun cars for 50 grand. A couple things first before I get into the list. Number one, all of these cars are easy to find for 50 grand. There's no stretches. Like, oh, maybe you can find a beat up one for 50. They're all available. Also, there's variety here. So I have sports cars, but I also have other practical cars, SUVs. Um, and I think that that's important. Everybody's definition of fun is a little different. Finally, this list is alphabetical because all these cars don't really compete. Some sports cars, some four doors, etc. You can't really rank them. And so it kind of depends on your specific situation. So this is an alphabetical list of the car, fun cars that I would buy for 50 grand. So with that in mind, let's talk through what I would get for 50. First off, alphabetically first off, the F10 BMW M5. So that was the M5 that was sold, V8 twin turbo M5 sold from like 2013 to 2016, somewhere in that range. I think this car is almost criminally underrated. We sell these all the time on cars and bids in the 30s, like the mid 30 to maybe $40,000 range. A really nice manual transmission one might bring 50, and that's probably what I would seek out if I, was, if I had this budget. But it should bring more. For one thing, manuals are rare. They only made 577 manual F10 M5s in the United States. But also, this car has a lot going for it. It has 560 horsepower from a twin turbo V8. It's gorgeous. I think the F10 M5 is a truly beautiful car. You can't say that about the E60. E60 is a nice looking car, but it's polarizing. F10 is simply an attractive vehicle. Yes, the F10 M5 is unreliable, but the truth is all BMW M5s have some issues. Uh, they're all pretty unreliable. And so, you know, this is just another one of those. You got to budget for the fact that it's going to cause you problems, but they all will cause you problems. And you kind of know that going in. And frankly, that's one of the reasons they've depreciated so much is because they're expensive to own, so you pay less up front, but more as you go. But that's not unique to this car. Most importantly, this M5 has the following great benefits. It's big enough for your whole family, so it can be practical, and the tech is decent enough to be modern. So what you basically get is 560 horsepower, which is performance that's great enough to be modern, tech that's great enough to be modern, and good practicality, and you get it all for under 50, and you can have a manual transmission. I think these cars are bargains. The F10 M5 is in that weird space where it's still kind of a used car, and hasn't yet become like desirable and vintage, like the E39 M5s are starting to become. And so the F10 M5 is still kind of a bargain, and I think it's underrated. And just to be clear, I don't think these F10 M5s will like shoot up in value. I just think it's a lot of car for the money, and someday they might appreciate a little bit. Okay, next one, cool cars under 50 grand that I would buy, Dodge Viper RT10, 90s, or late 90s, early 90s Viper RT10. I always bring up the Viper in videos about bargain cars or cars that are undervalued. Vipers shot up in value like late 2020 and 2021. A lot of cars did, but Vipers went up especially high. But since then, throughout 22, they have fallen fast. If you've been watching the Viper market, you've seen this like huge rise and then a pretty big cliff since then. Frankly, I thought they were bargains even after the huge rise, and now they're becoming even greater bargains since they're falling off a cliff. It is easy to find RT10 Vipers in the 30s and 40s, which is interesting because the car checks some boxes that are hard to check. Number one, it's fast and fun. That's easy to find in the 40s and 50s, but number two, it's reliable and cheap to own. Now, it's rare you find fast and fun and reliable. <laughs> That's a hard thing to combine, but if you do, you're almost never able to combine like iconic styling because usually something that's fast and iconic 
is also cheap, like maybe a Lotus Esprit, because it's unreliable. Usually something that's fast and reliable is not iconic, like a Mustang, because they made a lot of them. But this car checks all three boxes. It's fast, it's a total exotic car icon, turns everybody's heads, and it's cheap. Cheap to buy, cheap to own. And I just don't understand why Vipers haven't come up higher. They are the exotic cars of the youth of a lot of people who are starting to get into money right now. And I think these cars deserve more than they get. They're fun, they're exciting, I love them. Okay, next up, cool cars I would get for under 50. This is an obvious one, and I actually probably would get this if I was looking in the 50 range. Shelby GT350, the latest version of the GT350. Now, I'm gonna start by saying this car is not all that special. Um, there's a lot of Mustangs out there in the world, and there's a lot of GT350s. Most people can't tell a GT350 apart from a standard Mustang, except car enthusiasts, and even then, you see GT350s pretty often. But there's a reason for that. They are amazing cars. The GT350s drive incredible. They have the, one of the greatest engine sounds you will ever hear. They have a fantastic manual transmission. The feel is great, and they drive great beyond just straight line acceleration. They steer and handle they, it feels lighter and more tossable than you could ever imagine, and lighter and more tossable than a regular Mustang. And I think there's a lot to love about the GT350. It's one of my very favorite modern sports cars, one of my very favorite Fords ever, and I think it's a really, really special car. And by the way, GT350s used to be big money, and they're still expensive, but they're coming down. It's now fairly easy to find one for under $50,000, and that is just a lot of car for the money. Okay, next up. Lotus Evora. This is an interesting choice. I actually had the Alpha 4C on this list until about two minutes before I started filming and I decided to kick the 4C off and to add the Evora instead. This is purely due to transmission. The 4C I think is actually a more exciting car. You can toss it around a little bit more. It looks more exotic. It's smaller, looks cooler, looks more ridiculous, which is kind of what you're going for in this world. Um, there's a lot of benefits to the 4C, but if you're looking for a car like this, like a little mid-engine fun sports car, you probably want three pedals. And the Evora offers that. And it also technically offers back seats. And it also offers really beautiful styling. The 4C is more exotic looking, but the Evora is more beautiful, more like classically beautiful and simple. And I think it's great. Plus, the Evora has a Toyota engine, the Camry V6, which makes it more reliable than the Alpha with the flappy paddles and the Alpha powertrain. And I think there's a lot to like about the Evora. It's not quite as exotic as a 4C or even a Lotus Elise, but it's more practical, more powerful, I think a gorgeous car and it's not really losing value. You can pick up early kind of mild Evoras in the 30s, low 30s, high 30s, low 40s kind of range. Um, and nice, nice early cars are in that sort of low, to, low 40s to high 40s. And I think that those are cars that I would seriously consider. It's a lot of fun. It's an exotic car without worrying about maintenance all that much, um, but it's cool to drive and fun to drive. Okay, next on this list, cool cars I'd get for 50 grand. FD Mazda RX-7. This is the RX-7 that was made from 93 to 95. I've always had a soft spot for this car. It is one of the most beautiful cars of all time. I think it's probably the most beautiful Japanese car ever made. And I always cringe when I see them heavily modified because I really think in stock form, they got it right with this car. But, <laughs> The powertrains are unbelievably unreliable. The rotary powertrain is like laughably unreliable to the point where these cars are actually a lot cheaper than $50,000, but I've left you maybe 20 grand in budget that you will need to spend on maintaining and repairing the car when it breaks, let alone, not to mention, finding someone who will work on a 25-year-old rotary-powered car. These are cool, they're awesome in a lot of ways. I love them, they're beautiful, they're great to drive. They're light, they're fun to throw around, you get high in the rev range. It's a balanced, beautiful engine, great chassis and transmission, but it's just a really challenging car to own. Drawback, but there are also a lot of benefits to this car. Okay, next up, cool cars for 50 grand. Mercedes E63 AMG wagon. I have owned two E63 AMG wagons and my advice for people looking for a fun family car is buy the best AMG wagon you can afford. Came out in 05 as the E55 wagon and then it switched in 07 to the E63 and there've been a few versions of it. They're still making it to this day. Um, for 50 grand, you should be able to find a 212 body style facelift car. So that's a 2014 to 2016 model. They're great. They're just great. Twin turbo V8, tons of horsepower, more reliable than the naturally aspirated V8 that came out before. Tons of horsepower, um, great interior, fantastic technology, especially on that facelift version, the 14 to 16 model. It's just a damn good car. 
And it's not as fun, obviously, as a Lotus Evora or an FDR X7 or GT350, but if you need a car that's fun and practical and maybe nice and luxurious, E63 Wagon just fits that bill in so many ways. Um, it's a great, great, great car. I love them when I've owned them. Uh, I kind of want another one. They are very, very cool, very special cars. And my advice always is, if you want an E63 Wagon, which one to get the best you can afford? They always get better. Uh, and they're great. Okay, next up, cars I would own for under 50 grand, fun cars. Also in the Mercedes-Benz realm, G-Wagon. 50 grand buys you a nice G-Wagon. Mid 2000s, maybe late 2000s G-Wagon. And these things are awesome. Now they are not fun in the traditional sports car sense, like an RX-7 or an Evora, but they are fun in the sense that they're Fun to drive, you're sitting high up, you got this weird box feeling. It's kind of a fun car to get behind the wheel and drive, but also, of course, they're tremendously fun off-road. More and more people are modifying earlier G-Wagons to be capable off-road, they are tremendously capable off-road. And I think if your definition of fun is not the racetrack or curvy roads in a sports car, but rather going out to the desert, the mountains, trails near you, the G-Wagon is a really great car to do it with. A Couple of other nice benefits of the G-Wagon. For one, it's obviously practical, no third row, but it's got space for your whole family. Number two, it's more reliable than you think. People, people knock Mercedes-Benz for reliability issues, and they're right to. But G-Wagons, and especially earlier ones, it came out in 02 in the United States and lasted through like 07, 08 with its initial powertrain. G-Wagons are reliable. I own a 99 import G-Wagon with a 5 liter V8, and it has been a tremendously solid and reliable car. I take it to my shop and I tell them, find things wrong with it. Find anything that is like problematic with the car. And they barely can. The car is, I've, well, I've maintained it well, but the car is just solid. And later G-Wagons, this was also true. Most G-Wagon models are more reliable than you might think. The other cool thing about the G-Wagon is it doesn't really lose value all that much. G-Wagons maintain their value better than almost any other vehicle because they're desirable in the luxury crowd, they're desirable in the off-roader crowd, and the secret is out among used SUV people that they are pretty reliable. And so people go after those almost like they go after Land Cruisers. The, the real problems with G-Wagons is rust related. But if you find one that isn't rusty, it's probably gonna run for a long time, as long as you maintain it even reasonably well. Uh, they're good, reliable, strong cars. Okay, next, cool cars under $50,000 I would buy. Porsche 996 Carrera 4S. This is the token Porsche on this list, and this is my pick. You could also probably get a low-level 997, like a base 997, or maybe even a 997S, but I think the 996 4S is actually the better car, and certainly the better deal. I like how the 996 4S looks better than the 997, which is a controversial opinion, I know, but I like the fact that it's smaller. The width of a 4S is really emphasized in the 996 in a way that it is not in a 997, and also the 996 is just a smaller car that just feels more mechanical and feels more like throw aroundable. 997's definitely got bigger, more luxurious, more touring car. And the 996 4S is just a really, really special and amazing vehicle. Plus, 996 4S is also a lot cheaper than 50 grand. So you can, within your budget, do some of the maintenance and upgrades that these cars kind of need in order to be operated reliably. And then you have a great car. And finally, last vehicle on my list of cool cars I would buy for 50 grand or less, Toyota 4Runner TRD Pro. Uh, again, not for the sports car people, but if your idea of fun is going off into the off-road, these are cool. I would say buy the best TRD Pro you can find in a cool color. Every year the TRD Pro is offered in regular colors, but they do like one special color just for that year. And those ones, not only do they look incredibly cool, but they always hold their value a little bit better. My favorite was the 2015 in orange. That was the first year they did the special colors, but there have been some great ones. Cavalry Blue, which I think was 17 or 18, those are also awesome. I love the last year's color, which was Lime Rush, this like bright green. These are so cool. TRD Pro 4Runners are tremendously capable, they're unbelievably durable, and they have the added benefit of practicality, so you can bring your family around. And yes, it's not quite as fun as a Jeep in the sense that you can remove most of the car, but it's also better. Like a 4Runner is simply a better built, more durable, more long lasting vehicle. And so if you want to have some fun and also to like use it as a daily driver type vehicle, they're great cars. I highly recommend TRD Pro specifically. Those are the ones that people really fight over in the used market. And I highly recommend one of those special colors because they're so cool. It'll get you more money when you sell it, but also it'll just make you happy whenever you look at it. So, there you go. People always ask me, what cool car would you get for 50 grand? That is your answer. One of those, probably. Um, depends on if you want a sports car, or a fast wagon, or an SUV, but I got something for everyone on this list. And now you know what I would do for 50 grand.